bittersweet day for me. Uh, Justice Breyer and I go back a long way, all the way back to the mid-'70s when he first came on the Judiciary Committee, but that's another story. I'm here today to express the nation's gratitude to Justice Stephen Breyer for his remarkable career of public service and his clear-eyed commitment to making our country's laws work for its people. But let me say a few words about the critically important work of selecting his successor. Choosing someone to sit in the Supreme Court, I believe, is one of the most serious constitutional responsibility a president has. Our process is going to be rigorous. I will select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. While I've been studying candidates' backgrounds and writings, I've made no decision except one. The person I will nominate will be someone with extraordinary qualifications, character, experience, and integrity. And that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. And I, I thought about what I, I might say to you, and I, I'd like to say so, something I enjoy is talking to high school students, grammar school students, college students, even law school students. And, and uh, they'll come around and ask me, what, 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 is the, what is it you find particularly meaningful about your job? What sort of gives you a thrill? And that's not such a tough question for me to answer. Uh, it's the same thing. Day one, almost. <laughs> Up to day, I don't know how many. But, but the, the, what, what I say to them is, look, I sit there on the bench, and after we hear lots of cases, and after a while, the impression, it takes a while, I have to admit, but the impression you get is, you know, as you well know, this is a complicated country. There are more than 330 million people, and my mother used to say it's every race, it's every religion, and she would emphasize this, and it's every point of view possible. And uh, it's a kind of miracle when you sit there and see all those people in front of you, you, you uh, the people that are so different in what they think, and yet they've decided to help solve their major differences under law. And when the students get too cynical, I say, go, go look at what happens in countries that don't do that. And that's there. I can't take this around in my job. But people have come to accept this Constitution, and they've come to accept the importance of a rule of law.